How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to calculate your category spending in particular in your Discover credit card or your Chase Freedom credit card. These credit cards have a limit of $1,500, but none of these really shows you the real-time spending that you have on these cards. This video is brought to you by Webull. You can get five free shares of stock value between 27 and $9,600, this is $9,600 just for opening up an account and depositing even just one penny. Also, if you trade just $1 worth of crypto, you can get $5 worth of crypto for free. If you transfer $2,000 of a brokerage account or $5,000 of an IRA, you can also get $75 bonus on top of all of this. Check out my referral link down in the video description below. I actually have this problem with the Chase Freedom card. It's not quite through the entire quarter, but I have no idea how much I spent. I kind of want to know a rough ballpark so I know how much remainder amount that I can spend for the rest of the quarter. Now, 5% on a $1,500 maximum is $75 that you can get in cash back. If you spend anything over the $1,500, you're only going to get 1%. So theoretically, for anyone with a different card with grocery spending or PayPal categories, you would rather hit that limit and then move on to a different card like the Discover Cashback card, which also has grocery spending and you can get 5% on that card. Another reason to know is let's say you spent, I don't know, $900 on it so far and you don't know how much you spent on it. But if you knew that you had $600 left on it, you can go to a grocery store and buy some gift card that you need, maybe on Amazon or something, because you're about to buy something really big on Amazon or like Apple or something, right? Then you know exactly how much that you need in order to reach the maximum, and this is great. You can just hit the maximum, move on to the next card. Now, if you look on the Discover website, you can click on that category thing, and it'll show you how much you've spent for that particular quarter. But this particular number actually lags behind by a few days and it's not quite clear where they actually cut this off. So if you just go by the number on that website, you might end up going over a little bit as I have before. Chase Freedom also shows a bar graph, but they seem to lag behind by a full statement period. So you might have to end up going in there into your statement and adding each number up yourself. And on top of this, the bar graph does not show you the exact number. So you just have to eyeball and go, okay, this is like 10% of the bar. I have to warn you guys, I'm gonna go into a little bit of spreadsheet magic here. And this is a very, very useful tool. No matter if you're trying to add up stuff for categories in banking, or you can potentially apply this knowledge on other kind of spreadsheet work. So first thing you wanna do is go onto your Chase account and download the account activity in comma separated form. Once you download it, you can open up the spreadsheet. Now it's gonna show you a uh, transaction date, post date, description, category, the type it is, which is, you know, it can be a sale or it can be a payment. As you can see here, I paid $274 there, but the sale amount of three, dollars and 19 cents and then you have a category here which is something i added myself just put in a formula basically what you're doing here is checking if certain cells have a matching string of a certain type you can put in the exact string that you want to match in order to get all this started you click on a cell and then you press the equal sign on it and then a new formula box is gonna come up on there. Now you enter in this formula over here. It's gonna look a little bit convoluted and this is how things go on spreadsheets. It's gonna say if, or, exact, and then another exact, and then after that it's gonna be like an amount that you want it to equal to and then zero. So this is a little bit convoluted because there's three layers of nested functions in here. So the first thing that you want to look at is exact. Exact basically compares two different strings. You can compare a cell position, which is D2, and then you compare it to whatever you want it to write. So you put in quotes, groceries, which is what I want to compare to. If D2 matches groceries, it's going to return a one, which means it's true. Now the next thing is also an exact because I want to compare something else that equals something else. So it's going to be another cell. You just basically click on that cell and it's going to show up on that formula. And then I'm going to write something else. I'm going to write PayPal star eBay ink ship, which is exactly what appears 
on one of those things that I want to match to. But I want to do an OR operation between these two exact formulas where I'm trying to match two different strengths. So then these two things is separated by the comma and then put into the OR. As you can see at the very beginning, it's OR, exact, comma, exact, something, right? And then at the end, there's also like a little quote here that contains all of it. So all of this is in the first position of the if equation. So if any of these is equal to one, then it's going to show whatever amount that is in the next position, if it's true. Now, if it's false, it's gonna show up as zero. So the second position is, if it's true, you put in that number. The third position, if it's false, you put in that number and I choose it to be zero. So this is the mechanics of many of these spreadsheet things. And if you dig deep into the spreadsheets, it's gonna have a lot of different functions and it's always gonna tell you how to use these if you just search for the name. For example, the if statement here, it's gonna say if, if expression, which is the stuff I just covered. And then if true, it's gonna show that. If false, it's gonna show that. And then if you look at the exact thing, it's gonna go exact. And then string one, which is the first string that you wanna to compare to, compared to the string two. If both of these are exactly the same, then it's gonna return a one. But then because I have two of these string comparisons, I wanna combine them together. In other words, or them if either of them is true. So then I would um, use this or function, or any expression, comma, any expression. So any expression means you can put in like a full statement of some kind, including you know, the exact thing that I just put in just now. Once you have this done for one of the rows, you can then drag the yellow little circle on that cell down and it's gonna repeat this for every single row. After you do this for every single row, you want to sum up all of these values that happens to be true. It's true because it's either a grocery category or it's something I bought on eBay, which is a shipment stuff. Now you might have other things that you bought from eBay, which might not be a shipment payment. So it might show up as a different string. In that case, you can just put in a different kind of expression to match a different kind of string. You just sum all this up and you can see it shows shows minus 593 and 20 cents, which means for the rest of this March, I have $900 to spend uh, on this Chase Freedom card, which means I can also, you know, buy a, like a $500 gift card from a grocery store and it will count as a grocery category. Sometimes for my other credit cards, I actually just plug it in manually. I type in the description and then I have to think about if this is the correct category and then I just you know put in the number if it is correct. So this automates things a little bit better. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.